Hi everyone and welcome back to the Leicester series. Today we've got two massive games. It always is in these videos, isn't it? I always try and save the big ones for a video, but we've got Manchester City in the league at home as we try and take the top of the Premier League under our grasp. If we win this, we could go top of the Prem. And then outside of that, we've also got a match in the Champions League away to Lazio. And I'm still trying to get to grips with this Champions League format, but I think I've kind of got the hang of it that Man City is going to be a different beast today. But if we win it, as you can see, we're not too far away from being near the top of the table. Realistically, we're not actually going to take first place, but we can get joint first and that would be a massive massive step so early in the season. Lots of updates to run you through since that transfer window episode. Um, there's been a match engine update, which I think has killed our tactic a little bit. It's still doing pretty well. Um, and then our general form. Also, if we did any extra transfer business after your last saw us, plenty to get into. But I guess we'll first start off with how we've been playing since you last watched us when we beat Norwich 3-0. We followed it up by playing Newcastle away, not an easy game where we drew 1-1. We then beat Manchester United 3-0 and everything looked great. Then against Brighton, we looked a little sloppy, we drew 1-1. Then we play Juventus away in the Champions League and win 2-1 thanks to a sending off, but again, we didn't look great. It was very hard to break down a 10-man Juve. We then beat Everton 3-1, West Ham 2-1 in the cup, then to lose to them in the league straight after was slightly annoying. We since won another Champions League game against Lugano and then away to Crystal Palace in the league we won 3-1 so things are going better but we are struggling a little bit in terms of how the team plays and how well we are in the attack when it comes to the match engine since the little patch that FM did very recently but you can see we're sitting third in the Premier League with seven games played on 14 points only Tottenham and Liverpool are above us and then in the Champions League we're doing very well I mean we're sitting on six points I don't really know how it works but my theory is we want to be in this top eight right I mean it's green that shows something that we want to get into which seems very harsh because there is so many teams here so that can't be right but I don't I don't really know we're basically just going to try and keep winning until it goes to knockout stages if anyone does know let me know in the comments and speaking of letting me know in the comments don't forget to smash the like button for me and subscribe for more i've said it already but my plan is to hit 25,000 subscribers by the start of fm24 might be a bit ambitious but i'm going to push myself and see how far we can go so any support to get to the next mark which is 11k would be absolutely massive but yeah that's your way it could be a win today we could lose both matches we could win both We'll see where we shape up. I mean, Manchester City is a very interesting prospect because if we can beat them, that really does go to show where we are now as a team. And I've only just realised I've still got 14 days until the game. So let me get to that point and then I'll catch back up with you. OK, so it's game day against Manchester City. Ideally, I want to put out my best lineup for this match because I just want to get one over on Manchester City for once. We're going to go with Justin Silva, Gavardio and Mitchell. Interestingly, Silva has interest from Madrid. I need to be careful there because he does have a release clause of 91 million. So I need to keep an eye on that. Um, and Didi and Dewsbury Hall, no, I actually think I want to go with Bubakare Samare, even if his form hasn't been as good as Dewsbury Hall so far. Um, then it comes down to James Madison or Dominico Berardi. I'm going to go with Madison, Hudson Adoy, Calvert Lewin, and Ian Acho. That's fine by me. Let's get Dewsbury Hall on the bench. And with that, I think we're ready to go. Cross your fingers, everyone. I'd love to finally beat Man City. I feel like you've probably seen us play them at least three or four times now at this point. I'm not sure if we've actually won one single game against them, but maybe today will be the time that it changes. Their team has only got better over the summer. I believe they bought Kavica Kavara Shakilia, uh, the Napoli winger that everyone's calling, you know, the Georgian Messi or whatever. Um, we did a Wonder Kids superstar on him a few years ago on FM Scout, and he kind of is living up to that potential, showing great, great skill in the Champions League this season. And in the simulation, yeah, he is a, a very good player, a Man City spent a lot of money on him. Um, but here we go, straight from the off, there is a highlight. It does seem to be Manchester City pressure with Phil Foden, passing it to the man that I've just spoke far too long talking about, Kavarat Shakilia. The ball comes out to Walker, he hits it just over, and we get a lucky escape 40 seconds in, but hopefully that can wake us up a little bit. Looking at City's squad though, it is a very good one, and we might very well struggle today because four minutes in, it is another City highlight, getting in by our byline. It's Kyle Walker once more, just wide. I don't know where they're playing him, but he's basically playing as a striker. He is right back. He just seems to be getting in all of the right positions so far. But let's see if we can get a foothold in the game at some point here. Like I mentioned, the 4-2-4 hasn't felt so effective since that patch in the match engine. 
Uh, but maybe it'll be okay against City today. Maybe their tactics have been nerfed. Who knows? Gavit Lewin looks like he might be through here, though. The ball ends up falling out to Mitchell on the left-hand side, who does have room to put a ball in. Instead, he's going to try and pull it back. He finds Sumare. Sumare has a good chance here, but he gives it straight away to Phil Foden. Manchester City have got a great chance to counter-attack, but James Justin does very well to recover. Only to play it to the... You know, there was not one single Leicester player there. I don't know what he's doing. And then, here he is again, Erling Haaland. Thank God he does not score for once. Out by Bayern Deer makes the save. But six minutes in, looking pretty strong for Manchester City, isn't it? Three highlights already going their way. And it looks like it might be another here. But Madison does find Iheanacho. Is he brought down for a penalty? I've got to say, that looked like a good tackle to me. I would happily take a penalty, though. But is that not a sending off? If so, he took him out when he was one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. If so... Let's have a look. Penalty review. Penalty awarded. We have got one. It doesn't look like any card has been brandished, but it's going to be James Madison stepping up where Jamie Vardy would usually bag. Madison has missed one this season already, but he doesn't miss that one. We are one nil up against Manchester City and maybe it'll be our day today. I mean, the first seven minutes definitely haven't been going in our favour, but Madison's took that one away with confidence. We're one nil up. Perfect penalty right into the corner and let's take it from there. Let's see if we can just gain a foothold in the match gain some possession. Let's make it 2-0. Why not? Here's Madison with an awful ball into the box. God knows what he's doing there. And it is just going to be the Man City players who sweep up and try and play it long. But well done, Tyrick Mitchell. He's looking good so far. Steps in. Shouldn't have said that, should I? He's given it straight to Ruben Diaz. Foden's going to try and initiate a counter-attack. But once more, Mitchell is there. Stops the attack and finds Gavardiol. We just need to play calm football here. Every pass, we're giving it away. It's like we're just trying to give Phil Foden the ball at every opportunity. And here he is, dribbling around our defence like they're not there. Takes a deflection and in it goes to Bayandir yet again. The highlight is not over. I feel like we'll be doing a lot of commentating in this game because 10 minutes in, we've already had so many highlights. And But will we get a chance here? It's a long ball over from Madison to Ian Atcho, who's in against his old club. Oh, it's a poor shot in the end. Considering he was onside, he really should have bagged that one. He had a very good chance there. A lot of space to himself. But so far, possession is in our favour. XG is in our favour because of a penalty, mind you. But still, we will take it. It's a good performance so far. Hudson Adoid as well to stop the attack. Finds Cavett Lewin. We could have a break on here. But no, we give it away once more. And again, it's Phil Foden who's going to lead the charge for City. And here's Erling Haaland. He does score. I thought he was offside. We'll see. VAR is going to have a look into this one. Feel like he did run in from an offside position. And I'm crossing my fingers that he did. No, he scored yet again. We cannot stop this man. Been quiet all game so far, really. But we just gave him the ball so easily yet again. Foden was easily able to find Kavara Shakilia. He found Haaland and he bagged it into the bottom left. 22 minutes in, 1-1. I don't know what else to say. It's just constant highlights, isn't it? You can kind of get the idea of how the game's going because you're seeing everything that I'm seeing. Um, but again, we're going to try and get the ball and I'm sure we'll give it away. We do. Madison gives it away. I mean, are they pressing really high or are we just being really bad on the ball? It's Jeremy Pino, a man who was, you know, a star in our Villarreal save a couple of years back, did go to Manchester City and that save has done so here as well. A very good young team Manchester City are building right now. Um, but 35 minutes in, it is still 1-1. We do still have a chance of getting a result out of this game. We just need to be a lot more structured in our passing, not make so many mistakes, because right now we are just inviting Manchester City on, and they're the last team you want to do that against. But here is indeed, he has found Madison in the box. Madison's in. Offside? Question mark? I mean, it, I don't know, felt a bit too easy, didn't it? But then so did Erling Haaland's, and his was awarded, so maybe we're going to be okay. Goal review. Goal awarded. We are 2-1 up and it's James Madison yet again. And like I say, that felt far too easily. Uh, far too easy, should I say. Indeed, he just ran. Played a really slow ball through. Uh, but it was a good incisive pass, I guess. And then Madison finished underneath Edison in the net. We are 2-1 up, 35 minutes in. And it is the James Madison show right now. We're trying to take it into halftime at 2-1. But Madison's got other ideas. Playing a long ball in. And it's a pretty simple header for Edison to claim there from Gavardiol. And they are probably going to get one more chance before the half is up, unless we can steal it off them high up the pitch, which of course is what we try to do in this tactic. We do try to press high. We've got a pressing forward. That's Calvert-Lewin, who is all the way back there to win the ball. Fair play to him. He's done very well to win that. And here's Gavardiol. Can we build up? Silva. Very, two very strong centre-backs we have now, but for God's sake, we've given it back to them again. Well done to it, Mitchell. But yeah, Carl Walker's got this. I'm sure he'll find Erling Haaland. No, it's Kavar Shakilia instead. He scores. We're just asking for trouble, trying to play. You can play football against City, but the passes have been awful. Every single pass has been a needless one. It's not like we're trying to play to anybody. We're just giving them the ball 
straight back. I do not like what's going on in this match engine right now. And that just gone straight through our tie by Andir. No idea how that's gone in. Uh, but it is 2-2 two -two at half time, so I guess we can't complain too much. I'm going to say it's unacceptable. The boys agree, so clearly they think they could be doing more here. Two bookings for the Man City defence. Maybe we can exploit that. Possession is still in our favour. XG very much in our favour so far. We've done well on that front. Um, and hopefully our subs can be the thing that take us over the line. But I'll guess Manchester City also have a pretty strong bench. They've got loads of bookings so far. And just as I was about to make some substitutions, we do have an attack and it's Madison on the right wing. The ball comes in, it's cleared away, but only as far as Bubakar Samare. He does usually love a shot from these kind of angles, but instead it falls out to Mitchell and Didi. We're going backwards. It's not what we want to see. Gavardiol to Silva. There's space on the right wing if we can find Justin with an overlapping run potentially. Instead, Madison finds Hudson. Oh, Jesus Christ, Callum. Who's he aiming for there? He's trying to kill someone in the stands with that shot. I don't know what that was. Great play to get him into that position, but let's forget about everything that happened after that. And Didi is having a good game, so I'd feel remiss to take him off, but he's on a yellow. He's tired, so we've got to bring on Sander Berger. Samari also not doing well. Let's get Dewsbury Hall on the pitch. Hudson Odoi is going off after that terrible, terrible shot. Let's get uh, Dominico Berardi on and Vito Roque and see if any of those guys combined can give us some fresh impetus in the last 15 minutes at the top of the pitch. And maybe they will. We've got pretty much a whole new forward line and a whole new midfield. You'd hope they could cause something, uh, some issues to the Manchester City defence. So let's see. Here's Justin. Justin goes forward to Madison. Madison back to Justin. Some nice slow build up, but Berardi has tried to find a ball through to Vitor Roque, but it's well defended by Man City. Who I'm sure we'll love to score against us here because we cannot seem to beat them in this save so far. I think we've beat them once off camera maybe, but on camera, they always just seem to get the edge. And it's Jeremy Pino. By Andia comes out well, gathers it nicely, and the highlight will continue with 13 minutes on the clock. Will he distribute well, or will he give it straight back to Manchester City? I think you can probably guess. Here he goes. He hits it long. It goes straight to John Stones, but it's intercepted well by shoulder up. Vita Roque with a long shot. If he'd scored that, he was going down as a legend of a club, man. That would have been so good from him. What a strike. Just over the bar, though. Five bookings for Man City, two for us. 2-2 two -two on the scoreline. I'm going to demand a little bit more... For the final few minutes but this might be the last highlight we get and it is Manchester City on the ball to start with but we've won it back with Antonio Silva. Dewsbury Hall finds Madison who is in behind. There's two people coming into the box. Madison decides to slow up, gives it away to Cancelo and Manchester City can easily clear the ball away and what looked like it could be a good opportunity for us is now Manchester City's but Dewsbury Hall does well again. Vitor Roque don't go backwards. There was a good overlapping run man and Gavardio might have found it with a good ball through to shoulder up. Walker does well, but shoulder up straight on him. Andrea shoulder up. Pulls it back to Dewsbury Hall. That's not a penalty, but we'll have it. We'll have that if he's going to give. Please give it. Come on, if we can actually beat. If we can beat Manchester City here, I'll be so, so happy, man. I mean, they haven't been at their best this season. I think the first game of the season, they lost 6-0 to Liverpool. But we have actually been awarded the penalty. And it'll be James Madison for a tap trick. He steps up and it's saved. No, it's just not to be, is it? We're never going to beat Manchester City, man. That was the chance. We really could have done it. Ah, another game goes by where we just can't get over the line against what is a fantastic club, of course, but oh, we've got to be doing better there. Our striker's kind of letting us down today. We now find ourselves in eighth place with 15 points. Liverpool didn't win, so it could have been a good chance to catch up on them. But now Tottenham are out in front. I don't think that will last very long. But we've got to put that match behind us now and get straight in to the Champions League tie against Lazio. Okay, we're straight on to that Lazio game. We did not waste any time. We did waste a few players to injury though because Madison and Soyuncu are now out for a couple of weeks each. But let's pick our team. Hopefully a little bit of a rotated one to try and win us this game. So Mattia Marai, that is fine. Antonio Silva and Sotalo, yes, that's okay. Turek Mitchell, should it be Luke Thomas today? Uh, now, Turek Mitchell played okay last game. I'm going to keep him on the pitch. Uh, he probably didn't do very well actually, did he? You know what, we'll, we'll play him anyway. Off comes Ndidi, Drewsby Hall can play, Berardi shoulder up, um, Patson Daka, and we're going to give Victor Roque the chance again. He's not really taken off too much in a Leicester shirt just yet. Um, he's, he's trying to fill in those boots that Jamie Vardy left. It's always going to be a hard job, but yeah, so far, uh, okay, okay. He's, he's not been great, I'll be honest with you, but we'll see what he can turn into. He's still got plenty of time. I'm hoping one day he can be that striker that we oh so desperately need because this season, I'd say that's been our biggest issue. Our strikers are just not scoring goals the way they were the other couple of years where pretty much every single season, they were getting 15 or so goals each a season, but this season, not so much. We'll see if we can eventually get up to those numbers. But right now, 
We're not scoring many goals, but Pats and Daka might have something to say about that because he's just bagged one after nine minutes that they're trying to disallow for offside. The linesman wouldn't know anyway because he's looking away. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, go back if you want to check, but the linesman's basically just not watching the match. Um, Berardi, though, I don't see any reason how that could be offside. A great finish from Daka, and it has counted. We're 1-0 up. Lazio still got a pretty nice team, although it's a fairly aging one. It's exactly what you'd expect them to have at this stage. Immobile still playing. Pedro still playing. Felipe Anderson still going. Luis Alberto still going. SMS is there. Marcus Antonio and a bunch of other players. But overall, if we look at our team compared to theirs, I'd say it's fairly equal in terms of the standard of player we've got on. But we are managed by the greatest manager England has ever seen, Jake Cooper. So we'll be fine. And it looks like that is going to be the case because we're halfway through the game. Nothing's happened against us. The only thing we've done is a goal. And yeah, 45 minutes in, the game's flying by nicely. If we can keep racking up wins, I'm assuming it will still be six group games, even though it's not a group stage, but you know what I mean. Six games before the knockouts. I'm assuming that's still the case. And if that is the case, this will be three wins in a row if we do come out of this match with three points. But let's make some subs to make sure we get over the line. We're bringing on Justin for Matteo Marai. We're bringing on Sammy Braybook for Ken and Dewsbury Hall, the youngster Sammy Braybook, who we spoke about in a previous episode, who seems to have a lot of potential. Hudson Adoy comes on, Eden Hazard comes on on the left, and Ian Acho up front. Just to let you know, by the way, he's not been so bad. This guy did manage to score a very good goal in the Cup. Premier League, maybe not so much, but in the Cup, this man's got Carabao Cup written all over him. He tore West Ham apart when we played against them. And if he can continue that, I'll say what a sign it was when he eventually works out. But here we go. 20 minutes left on the clock and it's the second highlight of the game that feels very zoomed in. Either that or the players are playing right in front of my face. And there we go. We've zoomed out a little bit and it's Sutalo on the ball to Tyrick Mitchell. Onto Eden Hazard, who plays the long ball forward to Pats and Pats and is in for his second of the game, tries to lob the goalkeeper, but it's well defended. A very nice, incisive ball from our number seven, Aiden Hazard. And if he can keep this up, who knows, maybe he's going to be the starter on the left-hand side when we get to the big games this year. The highlights are continuing, though. It looks like we might be about to get a few as the game comes to a close. Maybe our fresh legs will help us out a little bit. And here comes Bayandir, very high out of his goal to play a long ball forward to Iheanacho, who knocks it down very well for Daka. Back to Iheanacho, great link up between our two strikers. And can we once just have a goal where we don't have to go to VAR before we celebrate every single goal, man? And um, is it allowed? It's awarded, and every single one has been today. So why do we have to keep checking VAR for something that is just clearly never offside? At no point does he even go close to being offside here. Great finish, great link up between the two strikers. I cannot ask for too much more than that. And that should be the win in the bag. And nice that our two strikers have got on the score sheet. And there goes Eden Hazard from long range, forcing a big save out of a Lazio goalkeeper. We keep this up, man. We are winning everything. The Champions League, the Premier League. We are going to be on top this year. Let's be realistic. We could have had City in that game. The stats show that we were better. Just wasn't the case in the end. We might have had two penalties, two very dubious penalties. But still, still, I feel like we were the better team. And I, I'm going to say this now. We'll end up losing to Lazio somehow. I'd love to get a third, though. We'll be flying. I think we will be top of, it, top of this Champions League table if we win this. But what a goal that is from Luis Alberto. What a man. Another team that I've managed in the past, by the way, Lazio, uh, in a YouTube series a couple years ago. And he was a phenomenal part of our Champions League winning side. But what a finish that was. Got to give the man credit. Regulon, a uh, former Tottenham player, plays a long ball forward and it's a great volley on his right foot. I think we're going to be fine. Four minutes to go. I don't want to adjust anything. They've gone quite defensive, actually. I don't know why you do that after you go 2-0 down. But we have made it out with the win. I do not know where that puts us uh, in the table, but we'll have a look again. I don't even know what the table means, but any news is positive news. And currently, I don't really understand it, but us, Wolfsburg and Celtic are top of the Champions League. Don't know how that's happening, but if these are the teams that are going through in green, I'll be very happy with that. But I kind of imagine it as these top eight will get first seeds in the knockout rounds, and then they'll get to play any team outside of the top eight. That's how I'm imagining it, but I don't really know. But if that is the case, that means a lot of big teams are missing out already. I mean, Dortmund, one point in three games. Juventus, one point in three games. We're loving life. If this is how the Champions League works now, we are going to smash it. But there we go. That is the end of today's episode. Two wins. Not too exciting in terms of different developments at the club, but just to let you know where we still are. We're still winning. We're still doing very well. And I probably won't bring it back for a long time now. Maybe not until after the January transfer window. We've still got £50 million in the budget, so I imagine we can bring in some pretty big signings. But for right now, we're just letting the finances sit 
letting the club be in a good financial position for once and hopefully we can build from there but thank you guys for watching if you can smash the like button if you have enjoyed subscribe for more but most of all have a great day everybody and i'll see you next time thank you and goodbye